All right, and we are back again. This time we are looking at parallel RC circuits. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with combining our two capacitors. Since that is the one thing um, that is different between RC parallel circuits and RL or uh, pure resistive parallel circuits because when you are combining just capacitance, not the ohmic value, but the capacitance, you add in parallel. Remember we um, talked about it essentially makes the surface area of the plates larger, which increases capacitance. So we're going to look at that formula real quick, and that would be total capacitance is equal to C1 plus C2, in this case, that is 0.76 nano, and I've just moved the decimal place and made 320 pico, 0.32 nano, and that gives us a combined capacitance, so a total capacitance of 1.08 nanofarads. All right, we're going to cover that up, and then we're going to start looking at the ohmic values um, because that whole process is very similar to everything that you've seen before this. I just wanted to run through uh, total capacitance real quick. All right, so let's start with C1. So we use our formula for capacitive reactants, the same one that we used in our series circuits. And so um, we put in our frequency and the capacitance and we get a total capacitive reactance for C1 of 4.19 K ohms. We do the same process for C2, and we get total capacitive reactance of 9.95 K ohms. Of course, to combine them together, remember once they are in ohmic values, they react the same. So when they're in ohmic values, you have to reciprocate, just like you would if it was inductive reactance or if it was resistance reciprocate to can get to get a combined value. In this case, we have a combined value of 2.95k. Again, we know that this is correct because it is smaller than our smallest value. All right, so once we have capacitive reactants, we can start looking at impedance. And you are familiar with the impedance formula. The only difference here between RC and RL is that we have replaced inductive reactants with capacitive reactants. All right, and we take our resistive value, which is 12K, and put that into our formula, and as well as our capacitive reactance, which was 2.95K. We get a total impedance of 2.86K. Again, we know that it is correct because it is smaller than the smallest value we put into the formula. All right, once we have impedance, we can get our current. Current is just voltage divided by impedance and that gives us 20.98 milliamps of total current. Now we're going to look at the individual branches and the current in those branches. So in branch 1, we have just the resistor. So we take the voltage divided by the resistor's um, ohmic value, which is 12K, and we get a current of 5 milliamps. So branch 1 has 5 milliamps of current. Now for branch 2, we take the voltage divided by the ohmic value of C1, which was 4.19 K ohms, and that gives us a current of 14.32 milliamps. All right, and finally, branch three, we do the same process, voltage divided by the ohmic value, and so we take 60 divided by 9.95 K, and we get a current of 6.03 milliamps. Now, if you remember from our previous examples, you can add light currents together, so we can add 14.32 milli and 6.03 milli together to get a total current for our capacitors. And using that in our 5 milliamps, we can verify that we did our problem correctly because once you put these two and you take the, you square them and take the square root of them, you should get fairly close to 20.98 milli. In fact, I think when I checked it, it was just um, a couple of hundredths off, so really close. And then uh, just a quick reminder, of course, when we have these straight parallel circuits with only one component in the branch, all of those components have applied voltage. 
So R1, C1, and C2 all have a voltage of 60 volts. And that's it for parallel RC circuit calculations. Next we are going to look at changes in frequency.